There is no doubt that we need to take every North Korean overture with a grain of salt. But what if President Trump's threats against the regime are actually working? And if they are, does he get the credit? Joining me now, former ambassador to the UN and a Fox News contributor, John Bolton is back. Welcome back, sir. Glad to be with you. So, uh, this madness. There's obviously a method to it. The president took a lot of criticism when he was belittling Kim Jong Un on Twitter and uh, in various press conferences. Was there a strategy behind it and is it working? Well, I think clearly to the extent there's any possibility, and I think it's pretty remote, of a diplomatic solution with North Korea, uh, it increases in direct proportion to the credibility of the military threat. And I think uh, finally now North Korea understands Barack Obama is no longer president. But let's be clear, the effort that they're making, if it is one, to get to the negotiating table has a very different objective than the diplomatic effort that three previous administrations have sought. Our effort is to get the North Koreans to give up nuclear weapons. Their effort is to finally get across the finish line and really finally finish the capability to hit targets in the United States. All right, so, so you don't believe them when they say, yes, we are willing to finally talk about denuclearizing uh, South Korea. Uh, are are they being Korea. just incredibly, uh, is South Korea being naive when yeah. they say they believe that North Korea will in fact abandon its nuclear program? Yeah, here's an all-purpose uh, insult that you can use. I'll apply it to the, to the North Koreans. Question, how do you know when the North Korean regime is lying? Answer, when their lips are moving. Mm -hmm. No, you're absolutely right, because so many times, uh, as you said, through various administrations and various multi-party talks uh, with promises of lifting sanctions and giving North Korea heavy oil and, and food aid, uh, they, they have promised to be on their best behavior and quickly abandon those promises. Well, we have evidence uh, just in the past few weeks. Uh, South Korea paid for the cost of North Korea participating in the Olympics. That's another subsidy. You, you can bet that the, that the athletes and those cheerleaders and so on didn't get the benefits of those payments. They all went to the North Korean Treasury at the same time that the U.N. weapons inspectors are reporting that North Korea is selling Syria uh, elements for the manufacturing of chemical weapons, another weapon of mass destruction like nuclear weapons. That's the future right now. Once North Korea crosses that line, uh, the nuclear Walmart in Pyongyang will open. All right, so if the president is using an unorthodox tactic, um, what do you see as success? Uh, success could be the fall of the Kim Jong-un regime, the reunification of uh, Korea under effectively South Korean rule. One, one thing you said earlier, both sides of the uh, 38th parallel want a reunited Korea. That's true. But it makes a big difference whose system prevails. There's nobody in South Korea that I know of that really wants to live under Kim Jong-un's uh, system. No, and neither does anyone in North Korea. If they had the choice between the two Koreas, wouldn't you rather live where there's prosperity and food? It beats living in a prison camp, absolutely. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, it, it's really remarkable. And there's a new set of sanctions imposed on North Korea for the death of Kim Jong-un's half-brother, and that was for using VX gas. How much of that gas do you think they have? I think they have large quantities of it. Look, we believe they've had a chemical weapons program for many years. That's sometimes called the poor man's nuclear weapon, and they just decided to get an upgrade, which they're very close to accomplishing. All right, how does this end? Well, I think uh, that we're coming, unfortunately, to a very bad uh, conclusion where there are two extraordinarily unhappy choices. Not that it's President Trump's fault. He's inherited 25 years of failure, as even Barack Obama's uh, national security advisor, Susan Rice, admitted. The two choices, both bad, are you accept North Korea with nuclear weapons yeah. uh, or use military force to make sure they never get them. I know, but people are still holding out for diplomacy. Uh, a lot of people think it's a fool's errand given their, uh, their past behavior. So, you know, riddle me this. What would the North Korea policy be under Hillary Clinton if she had won? Uh, they'd have nuclear weapons. There's simply no question about it. Uh, the, the fact is that although many on the left side of the political spectrum in America say it's unacceptable for Iran to get nuclear weapons, unacceptable for North Korea. They don't mean what they say. To me, the word unacceptable means we will not accept it, meaning one way or another, they're not going to get nuclear weapons. That's not what John Kerry and Barack Obama meant. It's not what Hillary Clinton meant. Uh, do, they, do they, people on that side, do they believe that sanctions will at some point work? 
Well, only if they're delusional because they're not going to work. Indeed, I mean, look, uh, Susan Rice, uh, you got to give her credit for for uh, for being candid. Yeah. She acknowledges 25 years of diplomacy and sanctions have failed. She thinks we can live with North Korean nuclear weapons. I do not accept that. All right. Thank you very much, Ambassador. Thank you, Kenley.